Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you. We give you all the glory, all the honor, the power, all the praise, the make of the heavens and the earth and the seas, and everything that in them is. Lord, unto you are we gathered. Reveal secrets to us. May our hearts indict a good matter. Take all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen, amen and amen. amen. Champions, shout fire. fire. Shout Ururu. Ururu. Shout Muzuzu. Muzuzu. Shout Mafura. Amen and amen. amen. We really want to thank the person of the Holy Spirit for the privilege to be here. Say thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And also we want to thank our father, Papa Joshua Aguila. Say we love you, Papa. We love you, Papa. You sound upset. Say we love you, Papa. Love you, Papa. Amen and amen. amen. Okay, so we're going to um, continue with our analysis. Well, and say to someone next to you, you are welcome. Amen. Okay. So we understand that we we have some of us online. So let's hear from those online. Let's see who will go first. All right, Sister Sophie, go ahead. Yeah, so I'd like to thank the Holy Spirit for this opportunity to present and for this platform. Yeah. Um, I'd also like to thank our Papa, Papa Joshua and Gayla, yeah. and of course you um, as well, Mr. Steen, for the opportunity to present and for the platform of the School of Metaphysics. Yeah, um, Excuse me, I also have my paper on my phone, so please excuse me. So my paper is titled um, Metaphysical Inspirations. Um, I tried to come from a, a different perspective. I agree with many of the points um, that were brought up um, regarding the metaphysical analyses um, that was um, that was uh, seen in the movie that was seen in the movie Sylvia. Um, however, one thing I noticed when rewatching the film um, it began with a quote, and that quote was. When you are asleep in one world, you are awake in another. And it was by Salvador Dali. I found it quite interesting that the movie began with that quote because Salvador Dali was a famous artist who um, was most famous for his surrealist paintings. And so um, some of those paintings are even quoted as being frozen nightmares. And in our lessons with Most Highly Esteem, we were taught that the enemy can use a person to inspire art, which mm. now brings into question Mr. Dali's um, inspiration, especially as it relates to the movie's use of the dream world as an ethereal bridge to gain access to Mr. Richards. Yeah, yeah. This is so much so that um, Mr. Richard even credits this as being his first memory as a child when he dreams of Sylvia um, handing him the hibiscus flower, which is seen throughout the movie as a token which furthers their connection and allows her access to him. Uh, Sylvia ultimately manipulated him and wanted full control over Mr. Richards and went by several means of attack in order to achieve uh, the result of bringing him down. However, again, once uh, another thing that I noticed and noted um, in the movie was uh, the fact that Mr. Um, Richards was so highly manipulated and so, um, I, which I credit also as being Sylvia's biggest success was the fact that she was able to convince him that being in an asylum is pretty much the safest place to be, which we all know that she proves that she can still access him even there. Because even as he begins to recount his uh, story to the nurse, he mentioned that being in an insane asylum for all those years and basically wasting his life in an insane asylum was better than the alternative, which would have been death or destruction, which he notes that Sylvia would have would have surely given him. Um, however, this echoes um, this echoes what is also seen, unfortunately, in the church that you know 
many people uh, suffer for lack of knowledge because it had Mr. Richards been a Christian, he would have been able to at least seen a pastor for prayer um, in order to help combat the battle that he was going through with Sylvia and surely he would have won with the Holy Spirit by his side. That's it for me. Thank you. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Zasovi. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. But uh, my, my concern in the presentation is that, um, first of all, let, let's even give the commendations. We, we, we're glad that you picked up that, uh, uh, that artist uh, who made such uh, remarks. And you talked about the source of his inspiration. And that is very, very, very significant. And that is why even some of the people we call geniuses today, the people we call geniuses and um, uh, uh, bookworms, the nerds, sometimes you, 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 you need to look beyond, you, you need to start probing further to why is this person a genius why is this person um what makes this person exceptional than me yes, sir. because we both have um one head two eyes mm -hmm. you know we're both human and he eats the regular food that i eat because mm -hmm. again when you look at jesus here yeah, if you look at the birth of jesus the, the, the birth of jesus was jesus grew up like a regular ch child grew up like an ideal nominal uh, human. Yes, Somebody you would consider normal. normal. Mm -hmm. But being exceptional began for him at 30. Mm -hmm. And we knew where the source of his inspiration came from, the Holy Spirit. Yes, he acknowledged it. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he had anointed me to do this. So. He acknowledged that the Holy Spirit anointed him for exceptional results. But today, when we look at certain people today that we are calling experts, geniuses, we really don't get to know, we, we don't seem to be interested in their source of um, inspiration, yes. knowledge, mm -hmm. and um, extraordinary ability. And that brings us to also this guy we call Einstein, too. I stand too because he's celebrated around the world, but how can a man create such impact even without the aid of the Holy Spirit? We may never really know whether it was the Holy Spirit who made him exceptional or not, but at least there are proofs to characterize who a Christian should be, and none was suggested in his life. None of those characteristics of being a Christian was ever reflected in his life. So that brings us to one point now, that we just have to be careful the kind of successes we admire, oh. the kind of successes we chase towards. Um, and one of the ways to begin to raise an eyebrow towards the success of such people is to start looking at their success from the from these various positions. One, maritally. What is their success maritally? Particularly those who are married. Is, do you understand? Jesus was not married, so that's why we can't really try and rate his success. But those who are married. So, was Einstein married? Did he have children? What was he like at home? And and then I think we should also, and I'd like you to also do like a statistics for us, Sister Sophie, if you can. This one will give it to you as a personal assignment. If you can help us find out how many singles the unmarried are super successful around the world, and how, my, how many married. I'm sorry, sir, can you please repeat that? How many successful people? Um, super exceptional people in the world are married and then how many are not married and what what is the 
the ratio, which is more. Because again, um, does that also have to play into, does that play into, because for instance now, if those who are singles, for instance, are more than those who are married, why? Let's find out why. Is marriage an impediment for inspiration? Do you understand? These are yes, the things sir. now we need to begin to look at. Very interesting. So that even when you now look at how a child is being raised to be exceptional, to be a genius and all that, you can easily tell now what to do so that this child can be both successful professionally, academically, and also maritally too. And quite frankly, uh, the Word of God, you know, we preachers are fond of saying the Holy Spirit, the Word of God gives you everything. But the truth of the matter is that the Word of God will not give you everything. God will give you an aspect of success. What the Lord wants to promote in your life is what He wants to promote. But to say God will give you complete victory in every area of your life, really, that's not true. It's nice to say, but really, because it is not every aspect of your life God is really interested in. You know, that's just the honest truth. And so the question is, how do you win in that area that God is not interested in? How are you able to even use that to enhance what God is interested in? Because if I know God is not interested in my finances, and it looks like I'm struggling financially, but God is interested in me doing his work, or is interested in me educationally, how can I use the area God is not interested in to, and to advance what, the aspect of my life that God is interested in. So that that way, God will have no choice now than to support the area he was not initially interested in, given the fact that, for instance, if God is not interested in my finance, for instance, I'm just giving that as an example. Yeah, God sees that I use my finances to still promote what he's interested in in my life. Don't you think that given who God is, with all the antecedents that we have and precedents, God can be moved to the point to say, this person, even though I'm not interested in their finances, and yet they are having financial challenge, they are still using that same money to help me. Then let me help them. Because King Solomon asked the Lord for wisdom. And Solomon said, and, and, and King Solomon asked the Lord for wisdom. And the Lord said to King Solomon, you didn't even ask me for money. But the things you didn't even ask me for is what I will give you. And this will tell you that God is not interested in every aspect of a man's life. Mm. Yeah, so um, I, I think with those statistics, that will help you even see here those you can tell are on the path of success. And I also don't mind you giving us, also maybe in our next class, an analysis of the impact of emotions on your ambition. You see, because, again, I know some of these things, but I like to see from everyone's general perspective, too, um, the impact of emotions on one's ambition. Do you... How you many people forgo... Yes. How many people forgo ambition uh, because of emotional demands? And whatever is demanding the attention of your emotions, is that thing truly worth it? And so you begin to weigh values now. Because this also helps you set a road map for yourself on your path of success. And you can tell who and who and what can be a an hindrance. And so we commend you on that aspect of that presentation um, from the external point of view, and which is very, very, very key. That um, not all successes that are celebrated and admired today are of divine origin. Because you talked about the guy having frozen dreams uh, and, uh, and strange 
And given the class of metaphysics that we're in, we can begin to look into that man and say there was just something very unusual. Is there such a thing as frozen dreams? So let's hear, maybe you would like to say something, Sister Sophie, and then others will hear their point of view on. Hey. Yes, sir. I wanted to expound upon, um, I guess, Salvador Dali. I learned about him um, in school, um, and he is most famous for, like, I don't know if some people remember, like, seeing, um, like, the melted clocks, the melted faces. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. quite odd. Um, yeah. He was purported to have, like, a bit of a, like, a dark sensibility. So I found it quite striking that he was the one that they would use um, in such a story so mm. it, it of course led me to thinking like what were the origins of his inspirations of his because inspiration. um exactly. it doesn't seem natural yeah that someone would think of to paint something like that yes and, and please help us still look into um uh, the impact of emotions on one's ambitions mm. and yes, sir. and also to i think i would like to also give all of us that <laughs> that aspect to to look into because it's something you also, uh, it helps you put your priorities in place. What should I pursue first? Um, there are some people today who pursued marriage first before their ambitions. They succeeded maritally, but the ambitions are still yet to be realized. And so how do you strike a balance to know which is which? But let's hear your point of view on that paper. So uh, any other person? Praise, praise the Lord. Yeah. You know, uh, we're really blessed so far with a lot of you know, sister, uh, sister Sophie's um, pos positions. It, it reminds us of, um, let's say, Grandmaster, for example, you know, where these are, um, you know, true experts that know the art of things. So, you know, sometimes even th this, this discussion now it reminds us that even a Grandmaster would even know the inspiration behind, um, you know, the uh, artist that, that, you, that, you, that you brought up. So even me, it's also a challenge too that wow, like I'm going to do research now <laughs> to know more of the details and, and, the, and the inspiration behind this film when we know that there are people metaphysically that would already know um, for, from our understanding so far. So, um, you know, but, but we're really being, being blessed with, with some of the positions, especially that on um, quotes from the, for, from the beginning of, of, the, of the movie. Quite frankly, um, it, it didn't even cross us to even look m into more details on, on that quote. Yet that was how, how the film be, be, be began. So we're really grateful for that. And we're looking forward to doing more details and really um, having a, a greater understanding and even going to, into more st uh, statistics um, and just a, a greater analysis to understand uh, how these things do affect one's uh, pursuits, ambitions, because that, that was really uh, what... Uh, um, Richard was was um, facing. He went for certain pursuits, then later on marriage. So understanding a, a, the a greater balance in, in that area, I, I, I'm, and I'm and looking forward to, to the it. The danger of whose ambition you, whose success you admire. Yes. Yes. And who whose success you admire too? Yes, sir. Yep. Yep. We're, we're looking forward to, to but at, um, you know, from from our positions, th this is what it has led to. Uh, I, I'm I'm very grateful for that. All right. So let, 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 let's see here for the analysis. Um, because um, even I'm glad that you brought up that point. I actually didn't look into. Tell us your name. Now. Sorry, my na my name is Brother Hija, and um, it, it's interesting that you brought uh, um, that point of looking into the quote. I was actually doing some research on um, the one of the ladies. I don't remember whether it's Give Me or Sylvia, but um, one of the ladies actually acting in the movie had has that whole, has those experiences of um richard like she sees one one, one dominant male f um figure in the dream constantly so i was i, I was kind of tying it into like maybe even the people people surrounding the movie they has like metaphys metaphysical encounters as well but that's one aspect that um i probably should look into more but Wait, even i'm trying to understand now are you saying that there's there was actually literally somebody in the movie in real life had those experiences, is that what you're saying? Yes, the aspect of the relationship between Sylvia and Richard in the dream. Okay, so you read about it, that somebody literally had such experiences. Yes. Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, that, that was my um, comment for the, her analysis. This is Sophie's analysis. All right, any other person? Any other person? 
Go ahead, go ahead. Amen. First and foremost, we'd like to thank the person of the Holy Spirit forevermore. And we'd like to appreciate and thank our Father, Daddy Joshua and Gila. And also, we'd like to appreciate and thank our most esteemed Brother O.C. King. And also, thank um, Sister Sophie also, even for the paper. This paper was really interesting. I just wish it was much longer. It was sh it was short. It was short. Um, I didn't see some areas of the metaphysical glossary identified in the paper. But one thing that was very interesting that you did is that you took the paper and you did actually went and analyzed the quote. And I thought that was very interesting. And it's something that I didn't do. And I thought that was very interesting because you actually cared to know who actually wrote the quote and the meaning behind it. And I know the exact um, drawing, the droopy face and the um, droopy clocks. We actually had to do analysis in um, English class. I had an AP class and I, we did analysis from it. And it's from the Gothic era. And usually he writes from deep, um, from a deep perspective. That's what they when we did our English, they would say that it's from a deep perspective, from the other world. So I found it really interesting that they were able to bring that at the very first quote. And that's how Sylvia was introduced to Mr. Richard in his dreams. But um, not considering the aspect of the frozen dreams, but through dreams. And he has like a famous painting. It's, um, I think it's called Midnight, if I'm not mistaken. It's called Midnight. It has different hues of blue lights and stuff like that. And a lot of people like to buy it. It's a famous painting. You've probably seen it in the office before. You've probably seen it on buses, in art galleries. It's a famous painting, and it's by him, too. And um, I just thought it was really interesting that that was taken further and I, and even how our most esteem also talked about even admiring success, the dangers of it, that's, that's really interesting. And I'm glad that your paper was able to highlight and bring all of that aspect for all of us. It was really, really good. And thank you so much. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Sister Sophie. Thank you, Sister Sophie. All right. Any other comment or any person that wants to present? Yes, sir. All right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Whoever is next, go. Amen. Amen. Right. Let's clap for Brother Joshua. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I would like to first and foremost thank the person of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I think I highly esteem Papa Joshua I think I highly esteem but also King, who has given us the privilege to in this let, learn the metaphysics. Amen. All right, go ahead now. So the title of our presentation is Sevia, a display or a showcase of ignorance. And we Why began did you choose that theme? That the theme. display of ignorance. And I because within I the like movie. It, but I'm want to know why. Yeah, because within the movie we did see instances where individuals were not aware of things that were happening around around were not knowledgeable about it that way. Don't rush your presentation now. They Don't were not talk too fast. We, we we need to get it clear. Yes, sir. So they, were, they were not knowledgeable. Yeah. Quite knowledgeable of the things happening around them. No, not but Richard was. He was aware. By experience. By experience, but not knowledgeable on what to do specifically to, the, um, to overcome it. So, what's the title of your paper again? A display of ignorance. Then, if Richard was fully aware, then you can't. That is no absolute truth. Uh, then, I think you say, the various aspects of ignorance. Thank you, sir. The various aspects. If you just say a display of ignorance, it looked like they were all completely oblivious, right? Yes, sir. So, and, and that's not that's not accurate. Richard Richard lived it. He experienced it. Yes, so, sir. So, so tell us, what's the title of the paper now? Um, Sylvia, a various aspect of ignorance. A various, no, or the various, various the aspect. various aspect of ignorance. Oh, you don't you don't need to say uh, the various. Just say various aspects. Yes, okay, sir. yeah, the various aspects. You're correct, actually. The various aspects of ignorance. ignorance. Okay, go ahead. So tell us what these aspects were. So the Netflix movie Sylvia is an intriguing movie due to the reason that it did it displayed the daily challenges of certain individuals. And when you say intriguing, what do you mean by intriguing? Check the dictionary word for intriguing. See, I refer to. See, that's another thing again. 
our, our use of language. And I believe that this class is like, uh, is helping us out too. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, yes, sir. except some of you are no, 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 no. offended. Yeah, intriguing means uh, arousing one's. Use mic, give him mic, give him mic, let him use mic. Intriguing is defined as arousing one's curiosity or interest. It also means uh, fascinating. Now, the question is, did it arouse curiosity in you or you were seeing vividly what you were already familiar with, having been taught? So I would go with both of those standpoints. But what, what I did find interesting go ahead, go ahead. was to, was seeing an experience. Continue. Continue. Continue what you're saying. Oh, was seeing an experience that I have, I have, I personally have not seen until now, right? Um, seeing someone having, although I've heard of individuals who had, um, be it spiritual husband or wife, but more or less have not seen how it runs how in the person's runs. life. Okay. Okay. So that was quite interesting. Okay. And then um, the other part would be, as as been taught, it um, did bring in that knowledge or. Um, but in that consciousness that in this happens in people's life. All right, continue with your paper. Okay. So in the initial scene of the movie, Sylvia, the entity through which Richard received help to his day-to-day -day activity emphasized on how important it is to her that he keeps receiving the red hibiscus flowers each time he was leaving her actual plane of life to his real world. And this statement implies the, specific, the, the specificity of objects that can be of concern Post. to a higher being. Pause. There's something you need to correct there. Yes, sir. Um, leaving her own aspect, her plane of life, to his real world. In that is that is very uh, offensive to Sylvia because this was what even caused the problem in the first place. Him claiming that his world was real, and her world wasn't. And so you seem to be taking his side. But you're supposed to be objective in your positions. Yes, sir. Because you are still acknowledging now that her word is not real. And by her proving that her word was real, she brought wreckage to the so-called real, real world of Richard. Do you understand? Yes, sir. <laughs> her word is real. That was what she was trying to prove to Richard. That my live in a world that is real. In fact, we, folk, we talked about the, the quotation, right? Yes. Hey, nah, that once you fall into sleep, you're already in another plane, and it's very real. Yes, sir. <laughs> so I think that that aspect of that line in that your paper is flawed because to acknowledge that you said she left her own plane of life, for you to even acknowledge that her own plane of life does exist, that means it is real. Yes, sir. But you didn't use the word real for her. You now use the word real for. For Richard's world. And you know Too why you did? Because you live in Richard's world. Mm. Yes, sir. Then how can you be objective in your positions now? You see why already that word, real, to support Richard's world, has already brought bias to your entire paper. It has already brought bias. Under conservative criticism, your paper is entirely biased. I can choose now whether I want to still listen to it or not. Well, go ahead. Let's hear. This statement implies the specificity of objects that can be of concern to a higher being while seen in disregard to an earthman. And this, therefore, suggests that Richard was ignorant of certain things that revolved in his life, and even though he was conscious of them, and he was aware of the importance and the dreadfulness of objects such as the red he the red he biscuit flower to connect to connote the presence of Sylvia, the higher being to his existence, especially when it was presented to him later in the movie. And he understood the red hibiscus flower to be a son of Sylvia watching his every movement in his world. And these statements show that objects can signify the presence of a being that is out of this plane of life. Therefore, it's important to pay attention to items that may be presented as a gift, from whom the gift was received, and the extraterrestrial being that may be prompting an earthman to give such a gift. And this statement thus aligns with the witchcraft called the dog that bites don't laugh, where an agent of darkness can attack a man with a gift, 
especially money associated with any form of illness he or she may have such as blindness or lameness as used in one of our examples the individual richard considered the individuals richard considered to be friends were worse in sight to see the danger that revolved in his life and richard already fully conscious of the danger Syria poses to his life thought that the one closest to him bemi will understand the signs he kept displaying on how uncomfortable she is making him feel. Richard will provide certain gestures that were strange, and Bemi, Richard's wife, never saw it as out of this world. And this statement implies that even the slightest sign of danger can be very unidentifiable by an earthman with no knowledge of the metaphysical, even though such a person might be well educated. This also provides the reason ignorant Christians perish a lot and, sol and solidifies the importance of knowledge that not all things should be dependent on the Holy Spirit in regards to knowing what to do. And this statement also ties with the lesson, the reason of things, as neither Bemi nor Richard's friends or colleagues took the initial step of getting acquainted with the issue affecting the life of Richard and which would have brought them closer in discovering solutions to Richard's predicaments. That's all about your paper. Yes, sir. <laughs> what are you people writing? Go ahead. Uh, use the one. Uh, yeah, stay there. Let's analyze your paper. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go Amen. Ahead. First and foremost, we'd like to especially thank the person of the Holy Spirit forevermore. Thank and Jesus. we'd like to thank our father, Daddy Joshua Angela, and our most esteemed brother, O.C. King. Um... For your paper, Brother Joshua, you did good. You tried. Amen. Stop, stop, stop. Go straight to the point. There's no commendation. We need to, when people have real problems, you can't be commending them in their problems. Do you commend somebody who is already having problems? Please, go straight to the point. Don't feel sorry for him. Just, and we're analyzing this. People have real problems. You, do, will you be commending Richard in his problem? No, sir. So, let's go ahead. Okay, for your paper, there was no aspect of the module that we talked about in the metaphysical glossary. We didn't hear anything that was mentioned, like, for example, esoteric physiognomy or anything that was mentioned. And I believe... Um, Ask him why. Why didn't you do Oh, that? why Let's, didn't you mention it? I was yes. avoiding repeating words or... Um, are repeating the things that were taught to us from using those um metaphysical that, that was not for you to say oh sorry, sorry. that was really not for you to say that you were trying to avoid the repetition no there are just some things i could, there are things you will say that i can say yes this one is just generally accepted when i query sister shelley's paper that she was repeating the things we were saying. She was actually saying the things I said word for word on my personal analysis on the first day we analyzed the paper. Yes. That was what I queried. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, fine, go on. Let's hear your own point of view. Mm -hmm. And if you still say, okay, fine, you were trying to avoid... No, no, no. That was too pompous to say, so that was wrong. And so go ahead again. Go ahead, go ahead. And and also the reason why I also didn't uh, mention it was also um, to also look at other. Although the model was taught to us recently, yeah. doesn't emphasize. I wouldn't say, in my own opinion, would not shouldn't be the primary basis, um, primary model I should use in um, analyzing the movie in a sense. You don't even from the way you are from your expression, you don't trust your judgment. Whether she uh, uh, criticizes you or not, stand by your positions. You don't seem to be firm. You're already losing ground. It's like you're already giving in. It's like you're, you're not trying to explain. Give us reasons why. Stand your ground. Yes, sir. Even yes, sir. if we challenge you. Yes, sir. Right? As, as I was saying, okay, the, 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 um, the second reason why I did mention why I did not go with the metaphysical glossary, being the module of our recent lessons, is to also look at other modules that can be used in explaining or um, bringing analytical positions to the movie 
as we've watched recently. Okay, so which other mo modules did you bring into it? So we, I brought in the the first module when I mentioned the dog that bites don't laugh. When, um, yeah, how does it come in into that module? Yeah, we mentioned about um, certain items, such as the red hibiscus flower, that can be of concern to a higher being, and that um, one should be conscious of certain items, such as gifts, especially money. But those are tokens now. They are tokens. Yeah, there, there, was, there was no agent used to. Right? I don't think many of us understand the dog that uh, the dog that bites don't laugh. No. No, it doesn't matter. In this regard, it doesn't matter. All right, so go ahead, explain something to us. You, so you guys can say what. So, um, if you if you can recall. Towards the end of the movie, please when no side talks, please. But, uh, yes, when yes. We, if can recall towards the end of the movie, when Richard had finished yeah. talking about his story, he did um, the maid, no, the nurse, didn't mention that someone had come with a gift, right, and then brought in the red hibiscus flower to him, and due to his experience and the knowledge he has acquired through that experience, he did back up and realize that he is still being watched. So we are bringing in that code. Um, we were in the, in the sense bringing in the um, certain I certain concepts to the dog that bites don't laugh. Okay. So what's your definition of the dog that bites don't laugh? Dog that bites don't laugh. We the definition to it is that an agent an agent of darkness can attack a man with a gift such as money. We um that and that. Attack can be can be associated with any form of illness he or she may have, such mm. as what blindness or lameness. Okay, so, you, so, you, you didn't say so the cause either. So was there any ailment? Even in the psychiatric world, Richard was not sick. He was very sane. I know, but but sir, we, that's why we say we are taking a concept from. No, you can't take a wrong concept to justify positions, right? Okay, tell us about your concept. So the. Because we did mention that yeah. the nurse, towards the end of the movie, did present a gift that Sylvia had given on, had told her to give um, Richard on her behalf. Okay, I think what you are trying to su support here is, uh, for, no, no, I, I, this is, first of all, I, I disagree with that position. What? I recall vividly that when I was explaining the dog that bites, I talked about how you have like a lady mm. whom you want to trick a man. Yes. Do you understand? Yes, yes sir. And collect money from the man. Yes, yes. sir. Yes. Let's say a man says he wants to have sex with somebody. Yes. You understand? And, and the lady says you have to pay me. And the man sends her money, even gives her transportation money. And she probably did not show up. Or she probably showed up but did not do what the person wants to do. And believes that she has smarted the man. Yes. It is true dog that then he now says that the dog that bite don't laugh. Mm -hmm. Unknown to her, she didn't know that the person she's that she that gave the money mm -hmm. is a high witch. Mm -hmm. A high wizard. The mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Now we, we can't really categorize Sylvia now. To be a witch. We may say she's an entity of witchcraft, mm -hmm. but. Um, but he used to, to the nurse, though, which could be a witch. No, the nurse wasn't. No, as in from, from his. From his. Because he was referring to. to I mean, anyways, that's. that's no, no, no. Sorry. Go ahead. Let's say you, you. You can't just renounce a position you suggested. From, from his take, because uh, I think. He initially mentioned, uh, you know, inspiration from from higher entities, mm -hmm. um, you know, so someone can be inspired to give a gift, right? So now, in a sense, maybe the nurse gave this. Although I, you know, I think it's a token, no, but it, but from it, from his take, this is a this tulip is a this this uh, leaf uh, this flower I, is I, a. I, I don't a think gift. that uh, respectfully, I don't think that really suffices because now, um, it wasn't as if. Richard was soliciting for any help. Yes, th there's th 
so therefore there'll, there'll be no cause there'll for this no for this cause. code to be activated yeah, exactly so which, which is why i agree that it still wouldn't suffice it because wouldn't there, there was no cause exactly. there was no cause there yeah um, that so the dog that bites does not apply yeah it, there. It, there's no cause to activate this code. but you see i'm glad that we're looking at these things critically beyond the paper because this this is how a think about a whole lot of christians who are living a presumed life Yes, sir. Okay, if I tell you now that my biological mother died pregnant because she was pregnant, mm -hmm. but I can't look at it categorically and say she was a victim to the carrier of heavy load yeah. because she had already offended a witch for marrying someone that they didn't want her to marry mm -hmm. in the person of my biological father. Mm -hmm. yes, they had somebody for her. Do you understand? Yes, sir. So that gave them a legal right to attack. Do you understand? Yes, sir. <laughs> and given her kind of nature, she was very, very generous and she probably, while giving tip, may not ha have had enough to give maybe a wizard. Mm -hmm. You understand? And, and these were instances that we gave. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We give you an example of a lady whose father-in-law said, please give me some money. And she said, yes. which money? Yes. And when you know you're a wizard. And the man say, ah, you call me a wizard. Do you understand? So I, I don't think really that that example suffices. But here now, please attend to your phone, please. Here, uh, or oh, sit down, sit down if, if your phone is not with you. But we're hearing that beep. Now, but here now, here now, you are looking at how a whole lot of Christians are living this presumed life. Do you understand? And my friend, I'm saying that we can't presume what is not. Yes, sir. You understand? That concept does not suffice. You see, I don't know. You guys should take this class seriously because a medical doctor cannot diagnose a patient on presumption. Yes, sir. That's problem. And you can't treat someone on presumption. And if you, and that is why even doctors and surgeons, when they are not really clear about what the ailment might be, in order not to make mistakes, they still go and consult somebody else. Yes. They understand. They discuss among themselves. They understand. So, and that's what we're doing here now. Yes, sir. In order to help you avoid an error. Yes, sir. I'm not saying it's going to happen to you, but I'm saying that that was not the accurate position to make. All right. Any other person, please? Let's hear you. For, for us personally, we, you know, going off the title, we're looking forward to really learning yeah, the, the various, various ways people display ignorance. ignorance. You know, exactly. I feel like I didn't really get that, you know. And, and I was surprised. Yeah. So I... I Use the mic, man. To know, do, you know, do you believe you uh, you covered that the various ways in p which people display ignorance? Um, thank you so much um, for that opinion, and um, I will personally say, I did not bring the specif the specificity the specificity towards that standpoint. Why? Um, you are you are avoiding repetition. No, sir. So why didn't you do that? And you gave us a title. You aroused now the curiosity in us, right? Yeah. <laughs> you intrigued us I'll now. We were not What's intrigued up? now. <laughs> you intrigued us without anything. Look at this guy. We can, we, um, we can still go further. Um, in so reference why did to you stop? You said it was the end of the paper. You are not saying you can Based upon what further. we had written, sir. But the, that, that was where we had... That, that was our mistake. But... We can still go further in terms of Richard's that's friend. That's what we're saying. Let's avoid the mistakes. Yes, sir. Okay. Any any analysis? Let us hear. Uh, any person who wants to say something. All right. You want to still say something? Go ahead. If you yes, sir. So in terms of that various aspect of ignorance, we also want to look at um, the man, Richard's friend, Richard's best friend, and Sylvia herself. Is that in your paper? No, sir. But but in that cons in that particular if you never aspect, considered it worthy enough to be in your paper, it's not something worth listening to. I feel like the only one you mentioned in your paper was uh, in terms of ignorance was the the Bemi lady uh -uh. Uh, that that you wrote. Mm. 
if you I don't think you've find... mentioned anyone else. This Abi, Sister Sophie, if you didn't find what you wrote, uh, what you're about to say now, worthy enough to be in your paper, why would you want to bring it as part of your positions? And you already said your paper was finished. Yes, sir. Do you understand? Yes, sir. If you had even said it without telling us that you yeah, have finished, it, it would have, it have stayed. It have stayed. Yeah. This big man. Yeah. 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 Oh, you just keep talking as, as the presentation. I don't see that. <laughs> you still know. All right, let's go. You did well. You did well. <laughs> right. At least we, we, we clap for you. Come and sit down. Oh right. are, are you presenting your paper? Come on, man. Present your. Go on. Present your paper. Let's go. Amen. Uh, my name is Brother Hija. And first and foremost, we want to thank the person of the Holy Spirit. And say thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. Um, I just want to mention, I did make the mistake of not repeating certain things. So you want certain elements of the ethereal bridge, the token, Leave different that aspects. To us. But yes, you sir. Just go ahead. See, don't describe that. This is one thing. This is where, see, listen, we're trying to tell you things that will enable you not to lose favor. Yes, sir. Stop telling us how incompetent you are. When we invited you to come and give us a paper presentation, we already trusted your competence. Now you're already apologizing. Sorry uh, for repetition. Then there's no need to present the paper. Yes, sir. Thank you. See, listen, this is where... This is why... This is why people don't see opportunities. Have you ever heard from people saying I was just sitting there when they told me I had to make a statement, I was not prepared to make any yes. speech? Yes. You just made the fool of the one who invited you to come and say something. Mm. You don't say things like that. Yes, sir. Except you don't believe in your paper. No, sir, I do. Then why are you telling us, sorry, you are apologizing? All right, go ahead. Let's hear what you're apologizing for. Okay. My title of my paper is called Higher Realms of Existence. Um, and then... In the movie Sylvia, Rich's wife operate um, from, from the corridors of the ordinary. Sylvia knew uh, how to finish Richard. For example, when she played uh, with Richard's minds and senses in the house so she could stop her, but uh, stopped his wife instead. In the lesson in High Realms of Existence, it stated that to prove what they are saying reasonable, they need evidence to prove the mundane, which is in the corridors of philosophy. Richard's arrest was not seen in what? the movie. Come again. The last line. The last line. Uh, in the lessons of the higher realms of existence, it was stated that to prove what they are saying reasonable, they need evidence to prove the mundane, which is in the corridors of philosophy. Richard's arrest was not seen. Are you saying that what is beyond the natural? Philosophy tries to make it very ordinary. Yes. So how does that apply in this movie? Uh, it applies to um, Richard's wife. No. That's another, um, what I meant by the um, the uh, philosophy was that she didn't look at the supernatural aspect. Like uh, I was gonna give an example, but I'm sorry. It's just that. The um, the example would be like when uh, Rich was feeling uncomfortable in the movie. She she was just like, oh, okay, may, maybe just like not comfortable but around. You know, honestly, you will not blame her. Every wife would do that. Yes, really. sir. I mean, a woman typically will react if you are not comfortable with her friend. Yes, it's true. You understand? Somebody she has come to like. It's true. Then you now say you don't like her. She will definitely, you just have to give her good reasons why this is her friend. It's not good. I mean, Pastor Christian, you're a married man. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, uh, for us, right, going off of his title, you yeah. know, Higher Realms of Existence, he you know, if, 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 he's, if he's saying that, you know, there was, there was, you know, there was a higher realm of, you know, someone existing in, in her house of a higher realm and was playing um, off of what, what, what you said now, right? That, that she was playing on her senses and it now let, no, uh, no, he was referring to Rich's wife, um, that playing on her senses to the point where she, she stabbed her in the stomach, she killed her, right? 
the, and uh, that's kind of where I'm at so far. I, I'm still trying to understand what you're really saying. No, no, but he's trying to uh, identify the different what makes philosophy different from metaphysics. Yeah, that, that part I, I didn't even understand that part yet. Yes. Well, off he, of his, he's his, his, his focusing quote. on the. Um, you see, listen. I don't believe that there was anything philosophical about his wife. Really, okay. because if you are defining philosophy on the aspects of bringing the metaphysical into the ordinary. Yes, sir. Right? That's yes, what sir. you're trying to say. Right? Yes, sir. <laughs> if you're trying to bring something metaphysical into the ordinary, it was Richard who was doing that. Yes, sir. Richard was a philosophical one who, who overlap from the ordinary into the extraordinary. He will enter into that realm. He will play in that realm. Yeah. But when he's coming back into the physical, he will come back as though it is nothing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But so I it was Richard that was the philosopher. Yes. He saw those things as ideals, yes. not reality. Yes, but sir. I and I'm I'm, so, I'm I'm so surprised that, you, that you're agreeing, bro. Because yeah, but you're because not taking on his paper, because because I, I think, think that he was just trying to define what higher realms of existence. No, 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 no. He gave an example. He said his wife. Yeah, he said his wife. I, I, from what I was hearing already, you it seems as though he was suggesting that his wife was taking something of a higher uh, of a higher realm of existence and making it mundane, making it yeah. making it, and then and then defining that Which as was philosophy. What Richard's problem was he would take. Uh, it, it was Richard that was doing that, that was but Richard he was, was saying that, that, that actually the wife. the wife had someone very supernatural in her house, but was making was Except turning it very ordinary, turning it very mundane. Something better you want to recommend for Richard himself? Go ahead, let, let's hear, let's hear. Uh, I I don't, but I believe. Go ahead, go ahead. Present your paper. Okay, yes, then sir. Then you tell us what your stands are. Yes, sir. Uh, Richard's arrest was not seen in the movie, but you can see that Sylvia planned it out even uh, with the investigating officer. Richard knew that Sylvia was the, culf the culprit, but didn't have the tangible evidence. Uh, as philosophy couldn't solve this problem, the issues of entities tampering in the lives of individuals. This is the importance of metaphysics because it goes beyond the natural. Uh, Give me had knowledge of Richard, but didn't have the spiritual eyes to see that um, he was not comfortable around Sylvia. What Richard lacked was the power of the Holy Spirit. The power of the Holy Spirit makes forces uncomfortable, and that and that's why it's important to have a spiritual covering. Stop. How many Christians have the power of the Holy Spirit? Not, I'm, I don't believe not many. Okay. So, if you're... Focusing on the fact that Richard did not have the power of the Holy Spirit, there was no record that he was even a Christian to begin with. To receive the Holy Spirit, you have to be a Christian. We were never told he was even a Christian. The name Richard may suggest that it is a Christian name, but how do you know? Well, the other thing. Yes, sir. And then also, too. All right, go ahead, present. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. We'll mm. look at it after you finish. Um, and then I said, um, and the response uh, was that Sylvia was, was God and, and filled all his needs. Um, I'm sorry. It was said. It was said that Richard was wrong not to pray. And the response was that Syl Sylvia was um, his God and fulfilled all his needs. And I said I disagree with in the aspect that his God destroyed all that he loved and um, set his life in bondage. And um, I said the God that we serve cares for, uh, enough for our well-being that uh, he desires us to have a relationship with others. But uh, in the aspect of um, originally not having the Holy Spirit, I was, I was referring to like if he had, if he went out of his way to search for a solution to solve his, his, the issue he had with the entity, Sylvia. So if he had his, his spiritual covering, um, which um, the minister would then pray or solve the case the for. I was not a Christian. You don't get what we're saying. It is true that this school of metaphysics is in a church, but us is a minister. All of us in this class were Christians. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And we're sometimes we're looking at it from the eyes of Christianity. Yeah. We're looking at metaphysics from the eyes of Christianity yeah. in the aspects. But when you're hearing names like Abhivananda's uh, Bharata and mm -hmm. Aharata, uh, do those things sound mm -hmm. Christian to you? No, sir. Okay, fine. So now, 
The guy, it's obvious, Chris, from the beginning to the end. Did you ever see anything no. suggesting Christianity with Richard? No. No. He was he not a Christian. So the the uh, the aspect of spiritual covering does not come into the picture. So why did you use that word covering? I I use that word covering as um as an example to see, um to say that if if he were to look outside of himself, if he were to go to like um because at the end of the day when um it got to a point where he slapped his coworker in the office, and um, it, it, the, even the entity, the entity Sylvia was um, disturbing his home life with his wife. Um, so, I, in the aspect of like finding a solution, that's what I meant by spiritual covering. If, if he were to go out and search for one, but he didn't in the movie. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Go so ahead. that was that was that was um, if my. That's paper, all so. your paper. Yes, sir. I wonderful. Well, are you both serious at all? Oh, sorry, sorry. I wasn't... Hey. Um. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Amen. We thank the person of the Holy Spirit. Um, what I want, I'm going to say is that when you talk about um, what Richard, and like, Richard didn't know God because in the movie, you see, even he was at, he was at, the, at a point that when she was tormenting him so much that even went to the kitchen to get a knife or when he got the knife i was saying to myself what is he going to do with a knife because he can't that's like spiritually he can't fight her with a knife it's like he was so he was so confused he didn't know what to do and if he had if 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 richard was a person who know god he would actually call upon god but richard didn't know god he didn't he didn't have no inkling about god because but he understand a little bit that about the metaphysical because he that he could describe the um, Sylvia as a um, as a being. I think familiarity made him underestimate Sylvia's capabilities. Mm -hmm. Familiarity because you know there's a way you are too familiar. You can be so familiar with someone. Him and Sylvia grew mm -hmm. up together. Yes, sir. And so he 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 thought that he could tell mm -hmm. what and what Sylvia could do, mm -hmm. and that there are certain places Sylvia. Certain abilities or an extent Sylvia could not go beyond because even Sylvia suggested that to him, mm -hmm. which was where she, she, Richard was asking, How come you couldn't save my mother? Mm -hmm. And she was telling him that, Oh, it's not everything I can do. But he later realized that Sylvia did that on purpose. Him, yeah. So mm -hmm. there's a way familiarity can mm -hmm. suggest to one that the other. The other person doesn't really have what it takes to do what cannot be thought of to be done. I don't know if that makes sense. Yes, sir, that makes sense. We, we, we also want to add more to paper, but we... What are you adding? you in your paper now. No, I'm saying based on... This is based on the notes because I came this year. so I wasn't It doesn't matter. The movie, we just watched it two weeks ago. What do you mean you came this year? What t This year and two weeks. <laughs> Which one is more correct? This two weeks, sir. <laughs> Didn't you watch the movie? Yes, sir. So why are you saying you came this year? Because you just came I was thinking that year. I would, it would add more to my paper. Come on, man. What are we analyzing here? We're just analyzing the movie itself. Yes. All right? Yes, sir. Since I saw you that spoke uh, earlier, did she make reference to even things we have done previously in other years? No. Mm. But we just wanted to hear your take on it. Yes, the sir. The thing is not about... Uh, how long you have been here, how long you've not been here. We are looking at the movie. Yes, sir. Okay. I, I guess even as you have flagged that, that's, that, that's, that's even an advantage for you. Okay. You know, Go ahead. there was a point you, you brought up that I, I, was, I was really, I was hoping you would expand on, right? Okay. Um, I think you mentioned Bemi in your paper that, yes. that listen, this he he should have had the you, you said specifically he didn't have the eyes to see that his best friend was not comfortable and i think you're referring to that uh, engagement dinner where like wh I, I i think i think you were were referring to to the scene where uh he first introduced them and he even proposed he went he went and even proposed um sorry the best friend i even proposed to 
uh, Cynthia or, or Sylvia, Sylvia, right? Yes. And that he didn't have that CC that, oh, this is my best friend. is not even comfortable, right? And then that's when you now mention now, like, uh, you know, the power of the Holy Spirit. But, you know, really in the movie, there were a lot of instances where this guy, his best friend, really took notice of Richard. He, even to the point where we're saying that, oh, I noticed that growing up you weren't interested in women. Yes. Uh, I even almost thought that you were gay. So, like, really, he, he, there, are, there are things that he did have eyes to see about Richard, yet couldn't pick up on the fact that Richard is not comfortable with the woman that I want to I be engaged to. So I, I was thinking that you would go at least to that area, and, and, and you didn't. But I thought you, you, you kind of touched on it. Yeah, I did. Um, yeah, I didn't expand on it. <laughs> so... Uh, was that what you were alluding to? Like, is, is that what you were getting to, or what, am I completely off with that take? Or no, you're you're right. The um the instance I was referring to when um was when um, uh, Richard and his wife was in the bedroom, and a completely different scene then. Yeah, but that was one of the instances where he was still uncomfortable with um okay. Sylvia. Hallelujah. All right, thank you, man. Praise God. Oh. There's another movie I wanted us to watch, but I'm not too sure now whether you can. You'll be able to analyze this. But it will be good for you if you can. Um, if you look at Sylvia, which has well. If you look at Sylvia, that movie, I, I think we should just look at Richard's wife, Bemi. Richard's wife, first of all, was a victim of two operational witchcraft codes. She was a victim of two. One, the mighty power of great illusion. Uh, she was a victim to that. The mighty power of great illusion, and she was also um, she was also a victim to the carrier of heavy load, which was actually first. Oh, let's just say that comes second now. Um, the reason why she was a victim to the mighty power of great illusion was that she saw Richard as the ideal man to marry. Who oh, no want to marry a man who is successful professionally, is good looking, and he has a place of his own. He's doing well. He's the real Marco at work. He's the reason why the business is flourishing. But that can be an illusion. So even maybe we need to start looking at her life as a person. She was a woman who was already sentenced to doom. Already. She was somebody whose cup was already full. She was already a finished business, even before Richard met her. That is why her death was very inconsequential in the movie. Richard did not go to prison. He ended up in a psychiatric so she was more or less like a scapegoat. She was not really important. But she was used as a means to an end. And, and she would have been important. But Richard made her unimportant. By infuriating the anger and the rot of Sylvia. Because Richard acknowledged she was the most important lady, woman in his life. Mm -hmm. And that he doesn't just like her, he loves her. And that gave Bemi prominence. Prominence. Significance. And what Bemi did, what Sylvia did, was to render her insignificant. To let her know that this lady is nothing. And so that's why now, beyond the movie, you need to start looking at where is Bemi coming from. If you look at that family, nothing about her family was said, which is also another danger. 
what if even Bemi was also an agent? Because nothing was said about her father, her mother, and even if there were conversations about her father and mother, there was no place, okay, think about it. And this will tell you even the danger young couples in Nigeria are in today. A beautiful lady like that, even in her pregnancy, she preferred to have her, be her, her colleague around her rather than her parents. Not even her mother or father visited her. Richard talked about his mom, and we can understand Richard's circumstance because his mom died. But for Gwemi, we can't understand why you don't want your mother around when you are pregnant. Right? Or oh, you disagree? You don't. No, you, if you disagree, you should. No, we agree. So you see, even when Brother Hija was saying because he did not attend classes last year, that was also, these, were, these are just basic common sense. Yes, Gwemi, well, how come we don't know? And if she had, if there was even a provision in the movie where there was a conversation, maybe before, between her and Richard, yeah. on why she doesn't want her parents around her, we can understand that. Okay, these things happen in many family circles. Whereas there are some ladies, because of how they grew up, don't want family members around. But there was no place where such a conversation was opportune to be held. Yes, sir. And Richard never said he didn't want to his family around. So that's another flaw. That's why Bemi, that also is one of the reasons why Bemi was not really significant. That already made her value depreciate. But beautiful lady. And so because of the fact that she was already doomed from wherever she is coming from, she, she, she was automatically a victim to the mighty spirit of great illusion. And another aspect of that mighty power of great illusion is the fact that Sylvia gave me a different, a different impression of her, that she was a colleague. She's a nice lady. But they didn't know this is a spiritual, a metaphysical entity in another realm, from another realm of existence. Do you understand? So it, it's, it's an illusion to her that, and, and that was what Richard was trying to make me see, yeah. that this thing is not real. This lady is not real, it's an illusion. And the whole theme about that movie is centered on one word, Illusion. And, and, and the consequences of living a life of illusion. And that the life many people live today, that many from the outside even admire, can be just a life of pure illusion. That what you admire and celebrate as I can just be just pure illusion. Now, of course, she became a carrier of heavy load on two fronts. One, she became a carrier of heavy load with her pregnancy. Mm -hmm. But then again, she was first a carrier of heavy load by who she was married to. She had to marry, she had to, she was married to a man whose spiritual life, whose life she never fully understood. That can be a curse on someone. And that will tell you that wherever Gwemi is coming from, she must have offended someone. And the person sentenced her to a life of doom. That Gwemi looks nice. She's, she's a great lady. And this is the reason why, even before you marry someone, uh, it's good for the person to meet your minister. And then also deliverance too is very important too. Yeah. So she was a carrier of heavy load on two grounds. The first one was who she married. She was carrying his load 
the load of whoever she married that she never understood. Uh, <coughs> She was also, yeah, that's true. There are three witchcraft codes. She was also a victim to to the operational witchcraft code that so the double slayer of destiny. It works with carry of heavy load to an extent. She was a victim to the double slayer of destiny, and the double slayer of destiny is prepared by the pool of probability. Remember the pool of probability. Yes. Please answer. Now, right? yes, sir, yes, sir. Yeah, the pool of probability. The malevolent and the benevolent, and this is stirred up by the choices the victim makes. So the very fact that she made a choice to even marry Richard already brought her to the aspect of the malevolent and did not see the benevolence. Mm -hmm. You understand? And we told you, that pool of probability is broken into four. Yeah. There is what you call, some even some, are, some other aspects of metaphysics say six, but let's just go with four. The benevolent, the malevolent, Okay, let's just go with the six. The benevolent, the malevolent, the semi-benevolent, the semi-malevolent, the permanent benevolent, and the permanent malevolent. Hey, let me bring the board, please. The, bene the benevolent aspect, the malevolent aspect. The semi-benevolent aspect, the semi-manevolent aspect, the permanent benevolent aspect, and the permanent manevolent aspect. I'm Superman. So you have the pool of probability. It's a very into two. The benevolent aspect. The malevolent aspect. This is the benevolent aspect, the malevolent aspect. The semi benevolent, semi malevolent. The permanent benevolent, benevolent, the permanent malevolent. So you see, we said there are six. Mm -hmm. Now, we said one's volition, choices, is what determines which aspect the person will fall. That's why it's called the pool of probability. <coughs> Is marriage not supposed to be a blessing? Yes. Right? Please. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please answer now. Right? Yes, sir. But through one's volition, one can enjoy the benevolent aspect of marriage or the malevolent aspect of marriage by either marrying the wrong man or the right man or the wrong woman. Some, through that volition, can experience semi benevolent, which means relatively peace everything is going on fine but sometimes from time to time issues will come semi benevolent and some semi malevolent issues from time to time but they still manage themselves semi benevolent will mean good things from time to time come but not all the time semi malevolent means from time to time they have issues even though everything is going on fine then there are others who are enjoying permanent benevolence. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Everything is fine. Yes, then there are others who are experiencing what permanent benevolence. If you look at the life of Leah, Jacob's wife, she was actually experiencing this and this. Maritally, 
she was in the permanent she was permanently experiencing the manivolence. She was permanently in the corridor of the manivolence. Permanent manivolence. Maritally. But with children, she was in the corridor of semi benevolence. Not all our children were good. But so you see, there are some people in one aspect of their lives they can be experiencing permanent benevolence. Is another era. For instance, now Richard, he was enjoying benevolence in the era of his job. Full benevolence. But with the coming of Sylvia, he brought his job to what? Semi benevolence. And then, or let's just say, he brought his job to semi benevolence. Mm -hmm. And then, but maritally, he brought his marriage to what? Permanent manivolence. Do you, do you understand what we're saying? Listen, if you look at what we're saying, you'll be able to know what to write. And like we told you earlier, it's not as if God will give you everything in every yeah. aspect of your life. Yeah. So, Bemi now, where would you categorize Bemi as a person? Bemi. Bemi. Where would you categorize her maritally? Come on, man. You should know now. She was in the permanent manivolence. Although, it was not so... No. In the, at the beginning, she was enjoying what? She, it was benevolent, actually. But with the coming of what? Cynthia now. Cynthia. Cynthia brought that marriage into what? No, semi-manivolence. Okay, he brought it into semi-manivolence. He brought... Semi it was permanent, it was in full benevolence. Yes, I, 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 but with the coming of C Cynthia, yes. he brought the marriage to what? Semi-manivolence. They started having yes. disagreements from time to time. Semi, yes. semi. Then, with, with regards to being pregnant, it was full benevolence. But then, when it comes to now having... Did she successfully give birth to the child? No. 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 So he brought the child to what? He brought the pregnancy to what? Permanent what? Manivolence. Because of the carrier of heavy load. She became a carrier of a heavy load. So that way, you can't really say her pregnancy was ever benevolent then. The pregnancy became a medium of attack. So that brought the pregnancy to what? Permanent manivolence. You see that? So you see, on the pool of probability, Benny was very, very unfortunate from the beginning. That's why we said, we need to look at this baby. Where are you coming from? Why can you just emerge on the scene? We don't know. The guy just met you at the restaurant. We don't know. And, and this will tell you how to choose. You need to look into a woman's family sometimes that you are interested in. And the woman also needs to look at a man's family. Maybe if Richard, and you know, if Rich, and Richard was supposed to be baby's savior. Richard was supposed to be Gbemi's savior because he was all, he had all it took. He had all a woman would want. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is there anything wrong to want a Richard? No. Mm -hmm. Richard was supposed to save Gbemi. Yes, Gbemi was very unfortunate. And there's no place where Gbemi ever said, let's pray. Sure. Before she goes to bed, she will want sex. And that's it. It was there in the movie. Just only sex. She didn't use after sex. Let's pray. Sure. Okay. I hope you got that far. Yeah, All, right. All right. Three witchcraft quotes. Which were what? Carrier of heavy load. The mighty power of great illusion. Which one was first? The mighty power of great illusion. That she thought that the mouse she was marrying was it. And then, carrier of heavy load. And then what? The double slay of destiny. I think that should be first. Yes, yeah, because true has okay fine. 
the mighty power of the Great Revolution was first, really. Then she made a choice to marry him. And so she became a victim to the mighty power of, sorry, the uh, double slayer of destiny. Huh? It was uh, even an illusion to Yep, yep, yeah. The proof of probability was, was at play here now. Why did she have to be at the restaurant where she met Richard? See. Now, there's an aspect again that I thought many of you would pick up on, which we can excuse Brother Ahija for. Since he said he has not been here, he just newly came. I don't know how new that coming was, but since he claimed he just newly came, and it is true he's new, but I really don't know how new that can be. Let's look at Sylvia. And then let's look at Cynthia. Sylvia was the primary image. Oh. You see here. You see here. Why didn't you say? Cynthia was secondary image. We've told you this before. But what happened between these two? Transmogrification. I thought you guys would. So, Sylvia did what? She transmogrified into what? Cynthia. And we told you, entities, spirits, they need what? Human blood. Human blood for what? For transmogrification, which means for her transmogrification, the habiscus, each time Richard came to her in the dream, that was her pulling blood. That was why she was able to gather enough to become real. That was what made her real. And she became real through Richard. Because she was gathering his blood. That was why she was able to transmogrify into Cynthia. Although they still looked alike. Mm -hmm. Because that's why when Richard felt, thought that he was stabbing, stabbing Sylvia, Cynthia now, he stabbed his wife. Yes. That's another third aspect of transmogrification. So there was one time from Cynthia she became what? Baby. This was what she became last, before she finally, and this was, Richard thought he was stabbing Sylvia, but he didn't know that he was stabbing what? The third image, the third image, which became, which was Bemi. So Richard already lost it. Sylvia had already gathered enough blood. Even though the blood aspect was not discussed, it was not shown in the movie. I'm not talking about the stabbing now, because the transmogrification already took place. The reason why they couldn't talk about the blood aspect is either probably they didn't know. We are in the, right now we are communicating with the knowledge of the esoteric. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So there was transmogrification already that took place. And that is why... Sylvia was able to transmogrify into different images. And Obaru now was a victim to the secondary image. Yes. He fell in love with a woman with a secondary image. So he was in love with nothing. He was in love with nothing. He thought that what he was in love with was real. Again, it boils down to the main thing, illusion. And nothing destroyed him. So, Obaru was a victim to what? No. Yes, true what? True what? True image. 
through a secondary image, yeah. So that was like the lower aspect. Yeah, 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 but the thing is that they were already under her captivity. Give her the mic. She was going to answer a question. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yes. Um, when you say she was um, like taking blood from Richard, oh, oh, did she like? I said get through dreams. I now. mean, through dreams. But I said through dreams. Through it dreams. So happens in dreams. Sexual intercourse in a dream oh. is the spirit drawing blood from oh, you. Oh, oh, I see. Even just having sex in the dream, what that simply means is not. That doesn't mean you have, if you have sex in the dream, it doesn't mean you have spirit as well. It just means that there's a spirit that is after your blood. Mm -hmm. And while you're having sex in the dream, they are drawing your blood. That's just what it means. Oh, okay. So, you did, but during sex, did you see blood? Did you see them? No. Thank you, sir. Yeah. All right. And of course, um, baby, me, Bemi and Obaru, there was something they had in common. They were both blind witch, witches. Obaru was a blind witch. Bemi was a blind witch. But there was something Sylvia successfully did. And what was it? And that's where we'll end this class. She successfully, successfully influence the life of everyone in Richard's world. Everyone. Richard's boss. And maybe also even her transmogrification with the secretary, the PA. There were a lot of transmogrifications in those. Yeah. Which you may want to call illusionary. Now, um, What's that thing? Hallucination. Yes. That's one thing we want to correct now. Because some of you relied on that, given by, going by your definition of being subjective and not objective. No, but if you look at it, even though it was subjective, Richard was the only one seeing Bimi in the appearance of his PA and all that, those were still, or, or, those were still aspects of transmogrification transmogrification and the reason why it was not hallucination halluc the reason why it was not hallucination was because the attack was deliberate Richard was on was on a deliberate attack he knew who was attacking him he knew why he knew why. When it comes to hallucination, you have no idea who is after you. Okay. That's the difference. You have no idea who is attacking you. You don't know why you are being attacked. How can you be seeing men as trees? I don't know. Who is doing this to you? I don't know. But not for Richard. Richard knew exactly who, what was what. And that was, that would have, that was already an advantage for him. Given the fact that he already knew but he now started manifesting, started misbehaving. Someone said, but you may never know if you were not in his shoes. No, Richard knew very well. And he was someone. Another thing again, I just remember, thank you, Holy Spirit. He just whispered it to me. Another thing again is the enemy can give you a future. The enemy can give you a future that you either want or not. If they don't give you the future, they can enhance the future you want. But you have to play according to their rules. Ben Misty offered him another future when he was in the psychiatric ward. So, which means that if Bemi was giving him a second chance, it meant that the first chance was not real. 
So we can still categorize, we can still come to the conclusion that all we saw in that movie was just one night's dream. One nice dream. Richard was still dreaming. And probably he had that dream in the psychiatric world. And that is how those in the psychiatric world, those are the kind of experiences they have when they go to sleep. Given the fact that they are in an environment that is already conducive for such um, manifestations. Because the movie began with the psychiatric world yeah. and ended there. So could it be that it these, be that these are just illusionaries, or this is just one night's dream. Because the only person who made that story real was the nurse, who said, I just, and the nurse does not live in the psychiatric world, she only works there. So who lives in the real world? Only the nurse in that movie lives in the real world. The others were all in Richard's world, which was heavily dependent on illusion. The only real person in the entire movie was the nurse. All right, talk to the Lord now. Talk to the Lord. Lee Sopratan and Mangrove Skit. Father, I will never be a victim like Richard. Help me. Help me. May I never lose my mind, Lord. May I never, never lose my mind to the forces of darkness. May I never, never lose my mind. May I never, 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 never lose my mind to the forces of darkness. Thank you, Lord. Glory be to your name. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Amen. In our next class, there's just only one movie we want to see for a few minutes. It's just one episode. And then after that episode, we'll just analyze and then continue with a new module. We hope you have been blessed. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. God bless you. Mm -hmm. dismiss. Thank you.